If for some reason you didn't get a letter yet, you might just send an email to Donna. We've been working on uh, updating all of our, our databases of addresses, and so it's possible that something didn't get you know, in the right place, but everyone who um, is on our mailing list should have one. Today's Gospel reading is from the Gospel according to Luke. Like the uh, seeds that we are talking about today as a symbol for our stewardship season, the parables that we are going to read today use symbols from nature to talk about the Kingdom of God. He said, therefore, what is the kingdom of God like? And to what should I compare it? It is like a mustard seed that someone took and sowed in the garden. It grew and became a tree, and the birds of the air made nests in the branches. And again, he said, to what should I compare the kingdom of God? It is like yeast that a woman took and mixed in with three measures of flour until all of it was leavened. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. We have heard the word of God for us in the sacred text. Let us now listen for the movement of the Spirit among us in the silence. Word and words, O God, help us to hear the one among the many. Amen. How many of you have had a chance to visit Inner Space Cavern, Cavern in Georgetown? Oh, wow, like not as many people as I, I thought. Um, so I got to go there on Wednesday on a second grade field trip. <laughs> Went with um, some other parents and teachers and all the second grade classes from Cowan Elementary School. And we had a tour, a guided tour of the cavern that you may not know actually sits right under I-35. At one point in the tour, the guide asked everyone to, to get totally silent. And if you listen really closely, you can hear the rumble. It sounds like thunder way off in the distance of cars driving across I-35. Meanwhile, you and all of those wiggly second graders find yourselves beneath the earth in a cave that is estimated to be around 20 to 25 million years old. Now, I'm not that great with geology, but um, somewhere around 
the range of 14 to 45,000 years ago, the cave actually was open to the surface. Prior to that, it had been slowly forming as water passed drip by drip through cracks in the surface that run along the Balcones fault line. That water had just been slowly working its way against the limestone to create what is now known as inner space cavern. And it's huge. It is like um, a whole little underground village and some of the rooms are cathedral-like uh, in their the, the height of the ceiling, so to speak, and the whole array of different rock formations that have formed under the surface. A lot of the floor is covered with mud because there's still water trickling down from the surface. It's mud with the consistency of peanut butter. And uh, we know that there are some prehistoric animals that probably met their well, they did meet their death in that mud because archaeologists have found um, baby mammoths, uh, giant sloths, saber-toothed tiger remains right down there under I-35. It's like a whole nother kingdom down there. Occasionally a frog or maybe a spider will fall through one of the small cracks that lead up to the surface. And our guide told us that they live on the skin cells and other uh, detritus that humans leave behind when we go on these tours. I wonder if Jesus would say that the kingdom of God is like that water slowly carving its way through the limestone, steadily creating an entire alternate world just out of sight. I love these parables of the seed and the leaven. They give us so little to go on. Part of, of the significance may in fact be that a seed is something really small and a, a portion of yeast is also not very large and yet when they mature and do what they do, they have the power to either, in the case of the mustard plant, become a refuge, a nest of protection and rest for God's creatures, or in the case of the leaven, to eventually yield the dough that will provide bread and nourishment for all of God's children. The hearers who were listening to Jesus that day talk about and wonder about, you can almost hear him sort of grasping for the right analogy. To what should I compare the kingdom of God? To those original hearers, they would have known that the mustard plant has medicinal healing powers. So for, him, for them, the image would not just be about the plant growing into a tree and becoming a, a physical sort of uh, sanctuary for the animals, but also about the mustard plant as a symbol of healing for the people. 
When Jesus talks about the leaven, on the other hand, he is um, provoking, uh, uh, invoking a common symbol that was actually used typically to talk about the way evil can spread quickly and pervasively. Yeast was often used as a symbol for evil, and it kind of makes sense in that culture where unleavened bread was often used for religious rituals, that yeast would sometimes be invoked to talk about how once it's, once it's in the bread, you can't really get it out. Maybe our sort of a version of our one bad apple can spoil the whole bunch. So when Jesus says, the kingdom of God is like this yeast that once it's in the flour cannot really be extracted, it's, it's like he is saying, well, maybe, maybe evil does work that way, but so does the good. Once it's in there, you can't really get it out. The gospel scholar Alan Culpepper says that this kingdom encapsulated in seed and yeast is, quote, powerful and irrepressible. Once it is loosed or unlocked, seeded into a community or a society, it will persist until the commonwealth of love takes hold in every corner. Friends, this, this is the good news for us today. The kingdom of God cannot ultimately be turned back. Once someone has truly been transformed by the love and the grace and the liberation available to us in God's economy, they will not want to let it go or live in any other kind of world. Elsewhere in the Gospels, Jesus says that the kingdom of God is at hand. The original language of the text describes something more like a force that is infiltrating our present reality. You can't always see it or put your finger on it, but it is slowly but surely taking shape among us. It strikes me that this might be especially good news at the end of an election cycle where we may have mixed feelings about the, the outcomes. But maybe the kingdom of God is like those organizers that knock on doors and advocate for change and the candidates that get out there and run their race with integrity, win or lose. No democracy can be saved or transformed in a single election, and so the kingdom of God cannot be built in a year or a decade. But the kingdom of God is powerful and irrepressible. And we also talk about Stewardship Sunday because it's also true that the more we nurture the kingdom here among us, the more it will flourish and grow. Christ needs folks to scatter the seed and knead the dough to serve the church and to teach the children to visit the sick and to share their wealth 
to encourage the despairing, to march for justice, to raise voices in protest, to honor the past and also to invest in the future, to pray without ceasing as we do week after week. Thy kingdom come on earth as it is in heaven. This is my prayer today, that we will continue to invest in this corner of the kingdom that we are building here at 23rd and San Antonio. Knowing that the work of turning yeast into bread or seed into plant is the work of God first and foremost. It will not be turned back, but ours is the privilege and the honor of joining with God in that work, according to the gifts that we have been given. May it be so. Amen.